Konnichiwa! Hello there, grade 8 learners! It's a beautiful day of learning something new. I am Teacher Rem, your storyteller from the division of Hingoog City. Today, I am going to tell you a story from the land of the rising sun, Japan. This Japanese folktale is written by Matsuo Basho. Are you ready? Sugoi! Great! Let's begin! The Story of the Aged Mother by Matsuo Basho A long time ago, there lived a poor farmer and his aged widowed mother at the foot of the mountain in Shinano. They owned and farmed a small piece of land which supplied them with food. The farmer and his mother lived a humble, peaceful, and happy life. Shinano was ruled by a very cruel governor who was a warrior but was afraid of anything associated to failing health and strength. He was afraid of sickness and dying. So, he declared to put to death all aged people by abandoning them in the mountains to die. Those were barbarous, very cruel days, and it was part of their customs to leave all people in the mountains to die. Did the farmer obey the governor's cruel mandate? Hi, yes. The young farmer had no choice but to obey the rule of the governor. The poor farmer loved his old mother so much, and the governor's order filled his heart with sorrow. However, he was very afraid to disobey the mandate of the governor. So with many deep and hopeless sighs, the young farmer prepared for what at that moment was considered the kindest mode of death. Just at sundown after work, the farmer cooked rice and tied it in a square cloth, and he also prepared a bottle of water. He bundled the rice and water around his neck. Then, he lifted his helpless old mother to his back and started on their painful journey up the mountain. The road was long and steep. The narrow road was crossed and recrossed by many paths made by the hunters and woodcutters. In some place, the farmer with his old mother on his back got lost and confused, but he continued the journey. One path or another, it did not matter. On he went, climbing blindly upward, ever upward towards the summit of the mountain. The mountain was known as Obatsuyama, or the mountain for abandoning of the aged. The eyes of the old mother were not so dim, and she saw her son's reckless hastening from one path to another. Her loving heart grew nervous. She feared that her son did not know the mountain's paths, and his journey back might be very dangerous. With her weak arms, she snapped the twigs and leaves from the brushes as they passed, quietly dropping them every few steps of the way. The narrow path behind them was dotted with tiny piles of twigs and leaves. At last, they reached the top of Mount Obatsuyama. Tired and very sad, the farmer carefully laid his old mother. He silently prepared a place for comfort as his last duty to the loved one. Gathering fallen pine needles, he made a soft cushion and tenderly lifted his old mother onto it. He wrapped his mother's padded coat more closely around her stooped shoulders. With tears on his eyes and an aching heart, the young farmer said his final goodbye to his mother. The trembling mother's voice was full of unselfish love 
as she gave her last reminder. Let not thine eyes be blind, my son. The mountain road is full of dangers. Look carefully and follow the path which holds the piles of twigs and leaves. They will guide you to the familiar path farther down. The son's surprised eyes looked back over the path. Then, at the poor old shriveled hands, all scratched and wounded by their work of love. His heart broke, and bowing to the ground, he cried aloud, O oh, honorable mother, your kindness breaks my heart. I will not leave you. Together we will follow the path of twigs, and together we will die. Once more, the farmer carried his old mother to his back. He hastened down the path with the piles of twigs and leaves through the shadows of the moonlight to the little hut in the valley. Beneath the kitchen floor was a walled closet for food, which was covered and hidden from view. There, the son hid his mother, supplying her with everything she needed, continually watching and fearing she would be discovered. Time passed, and the young farmer was beginning to feel safe, when again the governor sent forth heralds bearing an unreasonable order, seemingly as a boast of his power. He demands that his people make him a rope of ashes. The entire province trembled with fear. The order must be obeyed, yet who in Oceanano could make a rope of ashes? One night, in great distress, the son whispered the news to his hidden mother. Wait, she said, I will think, I will think. On the second day, she told him what to do. Make a rope of twisted straw, then stretch it upon a row of flat stones and burn it on a windless night. The young farmer called the people together and did as his old mother told him what to do. When the fire died down, there upon the stones, with every twist and fiber showing perfectly, lay a rope of ashes. The governor was pleased at the wit of the young farmer and greatly praised his effort. But the governor demanded to know where he had obtained his wisdom. Alas, alas, cried the farmer. The truth must be told. And with a deep bow, he told the truth. The governor listened and then meditated in silence. The farmer was very afraid of what will happen to his old mother hiding in the food closet at their very poor hut. Finally, the governor lifted his head. Shinano needs more than strength of youth, he said seriously. Ah, that I should have forgotten the well-known saying, With the crown of snow, there cometh wisdom. And that ends our story for today. I hope you learned a very important lesson. Until next time, goodbye!